Hi, I wanted to go over how to create a formative assessment rubric based on the learning targets that your team has created from a, unpacking a standard. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the standard that Matt used when he was modeling how to identify priority standards and how to unpack them. So one of the inquiry standards that he used was this one you see up here at the top. So construct explanations using reasoning, correct sequence, examples, and details with significant and pertinent, inf pertinent information and data while acknowledging the strengths and weaknesses of the explanations given its purpose. And that's a high school inquiry standard for social studies. Looking at that, I think, wow, there's a lot to it. So when we unpacked it, we came up with several learning targets. Most of them came directly from the standard. A couple of them were implied learning targets of skills that students would need to be able to do to be able to become proficient at that standard. So where I start when I'm creating a rubric for my learning targets, I think about this is a formative assessment rubric. So it's kind of that dipstick check of where are my students at and how am I going to provide them specific feedback if they aren't meeting proficiency yet. And it also provides the students the opportunity to reflect on where are they at in their learning progression and how can they continue to improve their knowledge base. So I wanted to just go through and model my thinking process and how I create these rubrics. And there's not one correct way, this is just a way that you can work with your team. So I go through and I start with looking at my learning targets and think about what are some of the big learning targets that I need to make sure I'm addressing on a rubric. And something that stands out to me is that a big piece of this standard is constructing explanations, but another piece is acknowledging the strengths and weaknesses of the explanation. So I actually decided that's two different separate skills. So I would create a rubric for both of those. Some standards are probably gonna have one rubric. Some standards, especially at the high school level, are fairly complex. So you will probably have multiple formative assessment rubrics Determine based on the learning targets that you have. You can just use your professional judgment within your collaborative teams to determine that. So when I started looking at my learning targets, I really thought constructing explanations was my big idea and the big scale of what I wanted students to be able to do. So that became one of my major learning targets for my rubric. Then I thought, okay, some of the stuff that I'm seeing within these learning targets, such as using reasoning, correct sequence, pertinent information, those all fall under that explanation piece. So those are gonna become part of my rubric. I like to start with a three and think about or ask myself, what would proficiency look like? What would the student be able to do if they were proficient in meeting that learning target? So with my team, we talked about and determined a three, which would be meeting the standard, would be the idea that they can use reasoning, not necessarily relevant or correct all the time. They could use correct sequence and they could use pertinent information to construct their explanation. I realize some of those words, especially reasoning and pertinent, I'm going to have to teach as academic vocabulary may not seem as student friendly as they could be, but I wanted to keep that academic language in there knowing that I'm going to model what those mean in my classroom for students. So it would be an expectation that they understand what it means to use reasoning and what it means to use pertinent information. So that would be a three. How we determined the wording and the numbers here is based on the same, I guess, wording that NTC or the learning zone uses that Matt and Jenny use when working with teachers as a coaching model. So we just thought it would be great to be consistent. So that's where these words came from. After I determine what a three is, I go to a two. So I ask myself, if the student was almost proficient, what would they be able to do in regards to this learning target? And I thought, well, they can use some reasoning. And again, it might not all be correct reasoning. They are mostly correct in the sequence of their explanation, 
but the information might be incomplete. Then I go to a one and I think about if a student isn't just really isn't there yet or I don't have enough evidence. Oftentimes when students are at a one, I just don't have enough evidence from them because maybe they haven't completed it or maybe they didn't do all of it. So I would say a one for this learning target is they're not using reasoning, they're not identifying correct sequence and they have irrelevant information or no information at all. So when I think about a one, I think probably I don't have enough evidence at this point. So we've gone over a three, a two, and a one. I find that the hardest one usually is a four because you really have to have a conversation with your team about what does it mean if that student is exceeding the standard. So if you were looking at student work for this learning target and it was just rock star student work, what were the attributes of that work? What are you seeing likely that makes it polished? That's what I'd be looking for. So my team and I decided, all right, so a three is that they can construct a quality explanation, a four is polished. So I would talk to my students about what does it mean to be polished? Well, they've edited it, maybe they got sought feedback and then they made revisions and they're highly detailed with their examples. So a four, I would say, constructs polished explanations that use highly relevant reasoning, correct sequence. Here, I added relevant examples and details. To be considered a four, I would wanna see a lot of depth to their answer and probably analysis. And then I also added a data component. So if they're including accurate analysis of data within that construction, constructing an explanation, I think that that was a four. So if you go back up to my learning targets, you can see one of my learning targets was I can analyze data. That was an implied learning target. So I felt that it was okay that I was including that as a four and not as proficiency for my students because I didn't know if I was gonna have time to get all of them there, but that was definitely something that I wanted to try to start working on. So that's an example of one of the rubrics. The second rubric I did really addresses this, the bottom two learning targets here, and it's identifying the strengths and weaknesses of the explanation. So I thought this was kind of the next step in the process, and it was a different skill than actually constructing the explanation. So I'll give you a chance to look at the rubric that I created here. And my learning target became, I can reflect on the strengths and weaknesses of my explanation. And you could even have maybe on others' explanations. So they're giving feedback to each other and you could use a similar rubric. So here, I, again, I started with a three that they can accurately reflect on the quality of the explanation. I want them to be able to identify strengths and weaknesses to be proficient. For a two, I made it or, so maybe they can identify strengths but not weaknesses. And again, a one, I just don't have enough evidence. With a four, I would be looking at that they're able to reflect on all of the elements of a polished explanation. So they're identifying the strengths and weaknesses of the different components, and they're able to even go back and polish their explanation more based on the reflection that they gave. So you'll notice that my rubrics are not terribly long. Again, this is a formative assessment. So it's to give students feedback and it helps guide your instruction on what your students need. I also challenge you in your collaborative teams to think about how does this help us with our work with MTSS? So how are we intervening when students don't understand and how does this tell us what skills they're missing because we've made these rubrics? So if you have questions, um, feel free to reach out to me. This is Elena Hutchinson, um, the school improvement consultant that serves Centerville. Matt would be a great resource as well as Jeremy and Karen. So please let us know if there's anything we can do to help. And thank you.